Welcome to the Software People Stories. I'm Shiv. I'm Chitra. And I'm Gaiti. We bring you interesting untold stories of people associated with the creation or consumption of software-based solutions. You'll hear stories of what worked and sometimes what didn't. You will also hear very personal experiences and insights that would trigger your thoughts and inspire you to do even greater things. Today, you're going to meet Zafar Ahmed, Technology Executive and Principal Consultant with PM Power Consulting. He shares his career journey nearly four decades long as a four innings match, one very well built over the previous one. He also shares some of his key defining moments and decisions that he has taken, some of the learnings he's had and what he's going to do from a long-term perspective and what has been his challenges over his career. And there are also goosebump moments. Listen on. Hi, Zafar. Thank you for participating in the Software People Stories today. A warm welcome to you. Good morning, Gayatri. Uh, I'm very excited and it's my pleasure and uh, very happy to be part of this uh, podcast on software people in story. And uh, being your uh, first podcast ever, I want to get you started. Where did your uh, software journey get started? Sure. Thanks for asking this because that could also serve as a short or maybe a little long intro. <laughs> so I was uh, born in Jamshedpur, the steel city, brought up and studied in Patna. My first job was in Jamshedpur, followed by jobs in Delhi, Minneapolis, uh, Chicago. Finally, I landed in Bangalore and decided not to move again. So far, so good. Having been in Bangalore since 2000 and regret not knowing Kannada yet, <laughs> resolved to learn 100 Kannada words in 2020. I have a degree in electrical engineering supported by a bunch of training and certification in software engineering uh, discipline. I think I was quite fortunate to have got my first job in information technology at Tata Steel. I fall in love with the software engineering and never looked at any other discipline. I started in 1981 with Tata Steel, so around 39 years of experience in software industry, uh, during which I got opportunity to play several roles, uh, starting from software developer to project manager, consultant, engineering leader, uh, mentor, and coach for teams of a startup to Fortune 500 organizations. I like to see my career as a four innings of a cricket test match. You would hear cricket many times because I love, I love cricket, right? Uh, so okay. four inning of a test match and the current phase being the fourth inning, right? So let me traverse you through all these four innings a little bit. The first inning was the first 10 years of my career starting as a programmer with Tata Steel in 1981 and concluding as a senior consultant with JK Technosoft in Delhi. The eight years tenure at Tata Steel has been the best learning phase for me. Having been part of Tata Steel's transformational journey from IBM 1401 system to Burroughs mainframe to end user computing using minis, PCs, utilizing open system software, Unix, C, Oracle, all those things, right? Very satisfying. Uh, tenure of eight years. My second inning uh, was from 1990 to 2000, during which I worked for software consulting companies in the US. During this period, I mostly consulted with Fortune 500 companies and assisted them in developing system for business intelligence, data warehousing, and e-commerce uh, space. I relocated back to India in 2000 and commenced my third inning, I would say. Uh, I worked for Hughes, Arison, and Harman uh, between 2002 and uh, 2017. Uh, during this phase, I was largely responsible for leading large engineering teams, managing delivery, and ensuring customer satisfaction uh, for our clients, global clients. In addition, as a change leader, I led several organizational initiatives towards engineering excellence, CMMI, TL9000, and also institutionalizing agile 
methods uh, at, at Ascent. And that's where you know, I got exposed to Agile, and we will talk more about it uh, later. My fourth inning began in 2016, and it's going strong. This inning is a departure from previous nine to nine, 60 hours a week job. This phase of my professional life is the continuation of transformation journey that got started around 12 years ago. The transformation from a manager to a leader. I wanted to share my learning, my experience, my successes and failure with the software fraternity. And to pursue this mission, uh, I joined PM Power in the mid of 2018. Currently, I'm engaged with the startups as well as large corporates as an advisor, consultant, you know, a coach. So that's all about my uh, professional life. Uh, I also wanted to share my personal life a little bit. I'm blessed with a beautiful wife, a homemaker, and two kids, one daughter and a son. Both are software engineer. I did not push them into software, but they decided to pursue software career. Me and my son have switched roles recently. Now my son is the guardian of the family and he has asked me to take a back seat. <laughs> so I'm enjoying uh, uh, this phase of my professional as well as personal life. Wow, what a fantastic journey and the way you're talking about it across various phases as a cricket innings. I can truly see your other side in terms of passion for golf and cricket. Can you elaborate more around what is it that, about software? that you are very passionate about? Uh, if I look at, uh, you know, the software, the thing that makes me most inspired as well as passionate about this field is the ever-changing landscape of the technology. I don't think possibly there is any other discipline or domain, you know, that has undergone so much of changes uh, than the, uh, the software and related technology. Uh, and that's what is fascinating to me, right? This, and and it, it is changing. It's changing every day. It, 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 it has changed in the last 40 years. And if I have, we have time, we can talk about it, right? As to how, the, what kind of changes the decade of 1980s saw, what kind of decade 1990, then 2000 and 2010. So I have, I have reflected many times around it, right? But on the... It's changing and, and the only constant is a change, as we all know, right? It is fascinating as well as on the other hand, it is a scary. <laughs> and it is a scary because you could become obsolete very, very fast, very, very fast, right? Long ago, I remember one quote and I, I live by that almost every day. To my horror, when I would wake up in the morning tomorrow, what I learned yesterday would be obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely put. It encapsulates uh, software uh, in a true sense. So true, isn't it? Yeah. In terms of understanding where you are and continue to keep running, and that that is itself is an excitement in itself. I've never heard anybody say this, uh, Zafar, truly. In terms of saying how how rapidly it changes, and that itself is a race, and that is an excitement by itself. Rather than looking at it and saying, okay, am I having self-doubts on myself or can I learn? Can I do that? I think that is a very different way of looking at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the technology has been changing ever since it was introduced. And I think every time you think that, oh, this may be, now, now this thing will settle down, you know, something new will come, right? And that will disrupt, you know, uh, uh, what you knew what you have been practicing, what you have been doing, and for better. Very well put. A uh, question for you is that uh, what motivated you uh, to move from um, US to India? Because uh, we hear this as a dilemma from many of our listeners. Think when is the right time? And at what point in your career do you want to shift? Because a lot of uh, uh, my, uh, my friends, colleagues, and our own followers are saying, hey, I want to come back to my country. Are there opportunities? How did you make that decision? Well, uh, a couple of things happened. Uh, one, I never uh, moved to the US, you know, to live there forever, okay? The prime uh, motivation for going to the US uh, was to uh, get exposed, 
you know, to a variety of software industry, uh, the technology, uh, you know, different culture, right? Uh, uh, and in fact, I, to pursue that, you know, I left uh, Tata Steel and I joined a software uh, services organization, JK Technosoft, right, who are into uh, software development for multinationals, right? And in that process, my I relocated to the US, right? But uh, I knew that, you know, it could be 10 years, it could be 15 years, right? Uh, but uh, finally, I'll, I, I'll come back, right? And in 2000, when I returned, definitely, the trigger was some personal reasons, right? I could have stayed there for five years. I was very comfortable. You know, I had uh, bought a house. I was uh, running a startup company, which was doing very well. Uh, so uh, the trigger was personal, right? But it was also supported by the fact that India, in terms of information technology and, and software, they were growing, right? Uh, at the dawn of that decade, right? All the software services company who were doing primarily maintenance, uh, you know, kind of work, Infosys, TCS, use, right? They took a leapfrog in terms of the kind of work they would be doing, right? And the potential of Indian software professionals, you know, and the whole industry, right? That was, uh, you know, proven and, and more work and better work, you know, was coming to India. So the growing opportunities uh, in India at that time also supported my decision to relocate. Right. And I made one uh, uh, good decision. I have not made too many good decisions, but the decision to move to India was good. And the decision to uh, come to Bangalore was equally good. <laughs> you would be surprised to know that I had visited Bangalore only for two days before that. Right? I never lived in Bangalore. I didn't have any family or friends circle. Right. Uh, but that's the beauty of uh, the city. Right. It welcomes, you know, yeah, everybody. Right. It's a very cosmopolitan city and a lot of opportunity. Uh, so I. And it's also a fraternity, right? This is the fraternity of software uh, uh, folks who, who are almost from every part of the country. And they support each other through problems, through challenges, ups and downs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic place, right? So this was definitely a defining moment in my personal and professional life. So talking about defining moments, right? What are some of your defining moments if you look back at your career? <laughs> there are many, Gayatri, and definitely, you know, I would like to share a few of them if time permits, because each one has some message hidden in it, right? As to how my career got shaped, right? And, and I'm pretty sure that listeners would be interested. So, uh, you know, if I look at, let's say, four or five defining moments, in fact, joining IT domain itself was a huge defining moment, right? And let me tell you why. See, looking back, I believe my starting a career in IT was a mix of wish, luck, and serendipity, okay? So there was the element of wish, but definitely it was good luck uh, also, right? Why? Because I did BTEC in electrical engineering, okay? I had interest in computer and software, but I did not have any background or skills, right? <laughs> the couple of things I knew was the Fortran and COBOL were computer languages, and IBM was the biggest computer manufacturer. And I knew about IBM because IBM was in the news in India. <laughs> in late 70s, having this asked to close operations, right? That was around 77 or so. So, so, so I knew, oh, there is a computer giant called IBM. So just after passing out, I was applying for various jobs, typically electricity board. I was electrical engineer, another public sector, right? BHEL and sale, another Indian oil. And one day I saw an ad in the newspaper, Tata Steel's needs programmers. I still remember that ad. I may have that somewhere. <laughs> the eligibility criteria was BTEC in computer science, computer engineering, as well as electrical engineering. Okay. So I was eligible. Okay. I weighed my options and then I told to myself, let me give this my best shot. Okay. I like this field. Let me give this my best shot. If, it, if I don't get it, I don't get it. I prepared tirelessly for the interview, got selected. Joanne Tata Steel fell in love with computer and software. And as I said, never looked in any other direction. So 
in, there is a saying in Urdu literature. Okay, I will I will read in Urdu first, then I'll try to translate. You may have heard this. It says, "Agar kisi cheez ko dil se chaho, to puri kainat tumhe usse milane ki koshish mein lag jati hai." The meaning is that if you wish something from the heart, the entire universe tries to make your wish. fulfilled and in retrospect i think that was so true in my case so very true yeah because in all our endeavors if we really not have this self doubt and not saying okay what are the naysayers saying and stuff just say this is something that i really really want cosmos or universe how do we actually conspires to make it happen very well put uh, zafar any other defining moments that you want to share with us Uh, yes uh, definitely uh, i i mentioned about uh, moving from in house it department to software consulting right and then going to the us uh, that was definitely a defining uh, moment coming back to india you know uh, i i mentioned about that that was a defining moment in my personal career you know transitioning from a techie to a business focused leader was another defining moment right i i mentioned to you uh, that in tata steel right uh, it was a huge you know learning phase right and i was really technology geek right i would love to experiment you know and and tear the thing apart right i would like i would i want to master this right whether it is cobol or c or databases or oracle right but when i started working as director engineering for huge software right uh, my role changed to managing right earlier it was mix of managing as well as individual contributor i in in the us also i was technical project manager i will manage project as well as i will contribute technically right technology evaluation selection design prototype but in huge the role was all managing managing team managing delivery managing customer right so it was different right and the scale was different whatever i had managed earlier the scale was much bigger here so i had to first like this right transform myself and then adapt to demands of this role okay i had to leave behind the techie in me right and transform to a manager and a leader right once i did that i started enjoying my role but that was definitely a defining moment and then the next one was my experiment with agile how my agile journey started that is is a true uh, defining moment uh, you know and and then how the transformations have happened right and let me let me share how it happened right yeah i am interested to hear that story zafar <laughs> agilist for long time I, i i always find it very intriguing for different people who have got uh, started in agile and having done it done agile also in a very different way yes and i would be honest okay see necessity is the mother of invention okay we all know especially when you work for software consulting companies software services companies you are dictated by the needs of your clients right you can't dictate your term right so as the luck would have had it got exposed to agile it was in around 2009 or so i was the engineering head at arisent and we signed up with ericsson okay to establish a large development center for their multimedia business at arisent right you know so a couple of hundred people right and as you know ericsson has been a pioneer in practicing agile right okay so on a scale of 1 to 10 if they are at 9 okay we were starting at 1 or 2 okay <laughs> okay so and we needed to form a team you know which could match up to their expectation right we didn't have much time right uh, you know uh, i mean we sold ourselves as exponent of agile we have been practicing agile right and maybe you know in the organization in bits and pieces we were uh, you know practicing but we were not mature by no means right so so we needed to step up and become mature in the agile method in a very very short time okay and i wanted to lead that by example right being a leader of the team so i got myself and then my team extensively trained and coached in agile so that we can match up to ericsson's uh, standards so that went well and, and then the, that's how the journey started subsequently i got opportunity to lead 
several clients program uh, where we took the team through agile transformation journey likes of Alcatel Lucent we did program for Converse for Microsoft Itron many of these customers we went through uh, the agile journey and through these engagements my belief in agile value principle and methods continued to strengthen it was a transformation journey which is still continuing okay and i don't think it would ever end but during the journey there came a time when i realized that agile is not about scrum and kanban it's not about events it's not about metrics but it's really about the mindset the values and principle the behavior the servant leadership in true sense right i started relating to what jim high smith has put it uh, agile is a way of thinking not a particular practice this transformation within me was a defining moment i would say right uh, and and that's continuing and that's how i'm extending my journey as a coach i want to share my experience my learning with the community community of software professional when i reflect back i realize that there are tons of things i did not do right in my career perhaps i would have done things differently as a leader if the transformation would have happened sooner so i want to share that there is not a better teacher than a failure so what are some of those some of them in terms of when you say you may you may not have made a right decision or either those challenges or problems that you would have you would see yourself what are some of them? yeah so i believe in retrospection right and i used to do that you know as manager as well as agile leader as well as a agile coach right and they have helped me in identifying in defining the highs and lows decisions which worked for me we didn't work and things like that right so let me share uh, a couple of them and it could be very personal right and not something which is out of the box it could run off a mill thing but it's still you know uh, let me share right i believe setting long term goals and objective is is one area which i could have done differently right and this is a more you know individual thing right okay i never set any 3 years or 5 years long term goal for myself right everything was transactional do whatever is needed for the present or maybe 6 months or things like that i mean there were a decision you know like i moved from tata steel to you know jk technosoft and then moved to the us came back to that was definitely part of a plan right in addition to this there were not many things you know i i did not set my goal that after 5 years i would reach this point in my career right this is what i want to accomplish right but i think it's important to have 3 to 5 year goals and one should work towards that whether you would meet those goals or objective fully or partially would depend on several factor right some of them would be outside of your control right so you may not be able to achieve one thing is certain that looking back you won't regret that you did not try to put a um, suffer what you're saying is uh, just like how organizations that we coach as well as we lead have a short term as well as a long term plan are you owning your own career do you have that uh, mentor who kind of holds you accountable for your own career sometimes we lose track of that as you rightly put the transaction we are so bogged down with the transactions on today and tomorrow rather than looking at it from a holistic way yeah so you may find it interesting or maybe funny but i have set a 3 years goal and objective this year for myself and i am tracking that closely better late than never right <laughs> actually i was going to ask you what is your uh, next goal but uh, maybe too personal i uh, i am happy that you you have set it up now Yes, I have set it up, and it's a combination of uh, personal and professional goals, right? Some of the things relate to how I want to manage uh, my health, right, uh, and those kind of things which uh, we tend to neglect. See, we are all uh, all of us we profession. Uh, Sometimes our life becomes unidimensional, right? We work for work, we think work, you know, we sleep with the work, right? Which is not a bad thing, but uh, definitely then you have to compromise in some other places. there are one or two more let me uh, you know uh, share that with you which is sometime i sometime i i regret that i did not give adequate time and effort to my entrepreneurial pursuits 
Okay. I had one gig for around 12 months, 18 months uh, in the US, uh, which I wound up due to my decision to return to India. So that's okay. But then in India, I, I had, I got a couple of opportunities, which I did not give my 100%. Okay. It was way back in 2001, 2002. And I guess I was not ready to take any undue risk. I was, I always wanted to play safe, right? But that doesn't work, right? Uh, so I told you that I had in me the entrepreneurial genes, right? Okay. But I did not nurture them. Okay. So uh, when it comes to risk taking, I will always say no. Actually, I was thinking the other way around. Peter Trucker says the best entrepreneurs are, are not the entrepreneurs who are starting fresh, but the, those who are crafting it within a large organization. And he calls this term called intrapreneur. From the Alcatel Lucent story that you shared, where you moved from um, Ericsson uh, and setting up a big organization as well as an initiative and making it a big success, I would beg to differ that you have been an entrepreneur. Uh, may not be the classical term of entrepreneur, but create, taking those big steps and big, creating a vision and be it training, be it coaching, be it uh, moving a large organization transforming it i think that in itself is a i find it very enduring as a story uh, Zafar. true uh, true i agree it's, it's just that you know perhaps i could sum up in one word that my risk appetite was less okay and sometime you know of course there are several factors including you know your financial factors your family and many other things right but if if possible one should be able to take uh, you know some risk and let me share, you know, one more thing. This is pretty uh, relevant, right? Uh, so uh, I'm happy to share this. Uh, the way my career is started and kind of work I got, and I will talk to you in a little bit later, but that resulted in my task orientation becoming very high because I was in dozens of situations where I had to work against very, very demanding timelines and I, I'll talk more because they're very interesting and at times funny also but so I think, I think that these are important to how do you how do you manage so many tasks right that's a very uh, good tip to share yeah so my task orientation both as as a individual contributor as well as when I became became a manager that was very high right so during my early years as a manager I was a tough taskmaster. I would always try to picture myself in my team members. Okay. And I would evaluate my team member with the same yardstick as I would evaluate myself. Right. So as a result, I was not tolerant to delays and failures. Okay. And very often my task orientation would overpower my people orientation, empathy, respectfulness, and be able to take failure into your stride as a leader, right? It took me a few years as a manager to realize that my approach, though resulted in successful execution of various projects, they were not sustainable in the long run, okay? And the approach was impacting the motivation and ownership of my team. And then I started changing, you know, my approach. And that's also part of you know, and the influence of agile uh, and agile transformation. But after I got transformed, I made sure to coach young managers, right, on the people aspect, right, and how facilitative leadership helps in producing high performing team than practicing command and control approach. So uh, definitely, if I could turn the clock back by 10, 15, 20 years, right, I possibly would be a better manager. <laughs> I, I, honestly speaking, Zafar, I have had those reflecting moments as well. Uh, when I uh, found Agile, I thought it was a breath of fresh air saying, hey, where was this? <laughs> where, why did I make these mistakes long? Uh, in, and those are what uh, makes you fall in love with your current work even more, right? Being able to mentor, coach. I feel that, you know, we have so many stories to talk about. I know we are going to be out of time quickly. I want to actually wanted to talk more about your transformation, this task orientation, as well as the computer generation in the 80s and 90s. So in the next podcast, if you would be okay to uh, 
uh, appear as a guest, uh, Zafar. Uh, sure, it, it, it would be a pleasure uh, because uh, I do want to share, you know, whenever I get a chance, what has been my motivators, right? Uh, and then people would find it, uh, you know, quite interesting to relate to that. I would love to talk about some of my inspirations, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I would love to do that. So before we log off, any key takeaways that you want to share? Sure. Two things that comes to my mind. Uh, the first and foremost is that this is a testing time for humans uh, across the world, right? We are experiencing unprecedented uh, disruption starting uh, beginning of this year, right? Uh, disruption in every walk of life, how we socialize with friends and families, our buying habits, our work environment, celebrating birthday and anniversary, vacation, everything has changed, right? The spirit of the human race and its resilience is being tested like many times in the past, right? But history has shown that the fighting spirit of the mankind has overcome extreme catastrophes and the human race has emerged stronger every time. I am confident that together we would beat the menace of COVID-19 once for all and reconstruction would begin. And I believe that the reconstruction would be led by technology, as the technology has helped us in the last six months to cope up with COVID-19, right? I mean, think about it. I shiver to think how we would have dealt with the present times if there was no mobile phone, no internet, no WhatsApp, Zoom, Amazon, and no Swiggy. Right, the technology has really helped, right, us in, in in coping. You know, we are working from home. It's like business as usual, right? Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely, it's such a, a positive and empowering message, uh, Zafar. Uh, it is important to be thankful and grateful for where we are today, and be together and have a collective uh, wisdom to overcome the current uh, predicament. <laughs> Very well put, Zafar. Thank yeah. you. I almost feel goosebumps in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also uh, encourage people, including my own, my kids, to develop a thinking habit, right? Uh, we must understand the whys uh, of any ask we are fulfilling, right? Uh, we should not do things without understanding. Once we understand the why, we may be able to challenge the status quo, and then we could try to make a difference. Right. So that kind of uh, habit of thinking, you know, thinking habits, uh, if people can uh, develop, that would be uh, very helpful. Mm, you know, uh, staying positive and sharing positivity is, is a very important aspect. Let's not lose any opportunity to thank, compliment people, right, for even a small dates, including friends and family member, right. And last but not the least is that let's not always look for big success. Celebrating small wins as an individual or as a team, okay, is very, very critical, right? In fact, they have been my motivator, you know, small successes. Very well put. And, uh, every success matters and every uh, step matters. And it's important to go one step at a time, but go forward. That, that's what humanity is all around. Absolutely. And, see, and uh, tying the whole thing with the technology that we are using on a day-to-day -day basis for our being thriving. Thank you so much for being a Great, great guest, uh, Zafar, and I'm looking forward to more such um, conversations. It's my pleasure. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation uh, with you, Gayatri. I was able to share some of my uh, professional journey, and I would uh, love to, you know, extend this in some other podcast. Thank you. We thank Siddharth for the music and Malavika for promoting the Software People stories. If you like this episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast client and spread the word in your network. If you'd like to share your story, contact us at podcasts at pm-powerconsulting.com.